for the Kansas City Chiefs, 1986 was a year to remember. The Chiefs turned away 14 seasons of frustration by earning their first playoff berth since 1971. It was a truly special season marked by outstanding achievement and high drama. Most of all, it was a season that saw these young chiefs believe in each other, never allowing adversity to drag them down. This team persevered to embrace the good times. In 1987, this continuing celebration of accomplishment will be the task that faces new head coach Frank Gans. As the top assistant in the Chiefs' breakthrough season, Gans played a vital role in the team's emergence. And we'll wedge it up in there. The middle return looks good. Don't worry about it. Come on, come on. First down, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's good job. Overall, coaching philosophy is war. War is an all-out expenditure of talent, of energy, skills, ability to the accomplishment of a specific objective. And that is our philosophy. It's an understatement, but in order to win two games, you must win one. And as you successively and progressively win and enjoy that success, that gives you an opportunity to build on future success. And that's what we have to do. We have to achieve success early in winning and then continue to build on that success, continuing to win. The foundation is there. This is a playoff team and a young one at that. One flight to prominence has soared. Another awaits. The memorable season began with a new look, one that reflected a growing confidence and maturity. There were changes on the field as well. Todd Blackledge was the number one quarterback working behind an emerging offensive line of Rick Donnelly, Mark Attix, Brad Buddy, Rich Baldinger, Ryan Joswiak, Irv Eatman, and David Lutz, number 72. Royce Green and Herman Hurd, number 44, showed early signs that the running game could add balance to the offense. The new mix produced results as the Chiefs opened with three victories in their first four games. Blackledge gets the snap, drops back to throw in the pocket, looks long across the middle. A diving reception by Stephon Page. Touchdown, Kansas City. Blackledge with a lot to work with, and he's back to throw. He looks long, and about the five, he's got a close touchdown! The fast start was also fueled by the defense, which demonstrated very quickly its flair for larceny. Shotgun formation, Moon quickly gets the snap, goes, intercepted by Greg Hill. Nineteen eighty six was a season highlighted by outstanding defense. Veteran all pros set the high standard, aspiring youngsters nearly matched it. In 
in 1986. No team in the NFL forced more turnovers and no team in the AFC intercepted more passes. This defense was a lethal weapon with the firepower to terminate any offense at any time. Two rookie linebackers and a young veteran helped propel the Chiefs defense back among the best. Second round draft choice Dino Hackett, number 56, was the team's leading tackler, and his teammates saluted him as the Mac Lee Hill Award winner. Free agent Tim Colfield, number 54, made his mark as a blitzer in the Chiefs' Sikkim attack. This infusion of talent and spirit generated a unit with soul, whose heart may well have been the man in the middle, nose tackle Bill Moss. 96, 47! In his third season, Moss earned his first Pro Bowl as one of the most dominating linemen in all of pro football. Yet the pulse of the defense beats in the secondary, the NFL's best in 1986. Our secondary is really a very vital spark in our total team energy. They are an all-pro group. I don't care how anybody votes. Albert Lewis, Kevin Ross, Lloyd Burris, and Deron Cherry. Four sturdy blocks in the Chiefs' winning foundation. A fourth straight trip to the Pro Bowl was Cherry's reward for his AFC leading nine interceptions. Since 1983, no one has more thefts than this one-time free agent. Then there's Albert Lewis. He does things that absolutely dominate a game. He's the type of player that you put him onto the football field with an attitude that, guys, we're gonna win today. We're gonna win today, somehow we're gonna win. I'm gonna sack the punter, I'm gonna intercept the pass. I'm gonna do something, just stay with me and I'll make it happen. An outstanding cover man, Lewis was also the top gun on a spectacular special teams unit. Eleven times the Chiefs blocked or deflected kicks. Six times a touchdown was the result. The electrifying part of a sizzling special teams performance that was among the finest in the history of the game. The architect was Frank Gans, and he received contributions from many, including Sherman Cocroft, Lewis Cooper, Mark Robinson, Jonathan Hayes, and Aaron Pearson. Hunter Lewis Colbert concluded a solid rookie season with strong efforts against the Steelers and Jets. In 1986, the Chiefs special team steered an exhilarating ride through the NFL, a record-breaking journey that left an unforgettable impression. McGee on the kickoff at the 5, 10, 15, trips, bobbles the ball, it's loose, the Chiefs have picked it up, it's picked up by Kevin Ross, he's in the end zone, touchdown, Kansas City, what a play! In 1987, the Chiefs begin their 25th season in Kansas City, a city and a franchise growing up together. Since 1963, that first season here, the Chiefs have erected an impressive monument of achievement. Two AFL titles and a Super Bowl championship, the crowning moments in this team's proud past.
Some of pro football's greatest players performed at Old Municipal Stadium. The names are familiar to all of us. The spectacular number 89, Otis Taylor, and the swift little man, Mike Garrett. There were many more. Jerry Mays, Emmett Thomas, Johnny Robinson, Buck Buchanan, Ed Podolak, Gerald Wilson, Jan Stederud, and Hall of Famers Bobby Bell and Willie Lanier. Exciting times for Kansas City and the Chiefs. The city cherished its team, and we rewarded the city with championship football under the leadership of the team's newest Hall of Fame honoree, Hank Stram. It's been a dynamic quarter century for the city and the franchise. It's hard to believe that it's been 25 years since I arrived here in Kansas City because the memories are so vivid in my mind. I go back and I can remember the very first appearance we made at Old Municipal Stadium. And how could I forget the tremendous players I had the opportunity to work with and some of the outstanding plays that they made while being a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. One thing that I'm very proud of, the fans were rather reluctant to accept us at first. Eventually, they took us into their hearts. And a dream come true for any football player is to move into a beautiful complex like Arrowhead Stadium. It's been a great 25 years, but you know, I think the next 25 will be even greater. The 1986 Kansas City Chiefs proudly took their place among the finest teams in the history of the organization. One man who has stood tall for nearly a decade is defensive end Art Still. The cornerstone of the Chiefs defense still enjoyed his best season in 86. This year, Henry Marshall will begin his 12th season in Kansas City. This number 89 needs only five catches to surpass the most celebrated 89 in Chiefs history, Otis Taylor, as the team's all-time leading receiver. Marshall is the elder statesman of a talented receiving corps that also features Carlos Carson and Stephon Page, number 83. No player in the NFL has caught more touchdown passes over the past two seasons than the acrobatic page. In this playoff season, many grabbed a share of the spotlight. Number 42, Jeff Smith played the star against Tampa with his sparkling game-winning burst in the fourth quarter. In a come-from-behind win at Buffalo, it was tight end Paul Kaufman who seized the moment. But the brightest light was Lloyd Burris, whose two touchdowns in a victory over San Diego was the NFL's most spectacular defensive performance last season. Intercepted! Burris, 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! For the second time, Lloyd Burris has intercepted Bouch for a touchdown. It was a season when mighty men produced magic moments. It was also a season of comebacks and cliffhangers. None greater than the encounter with the Chargers in San Diego. In the third quarter, the Chiefs trailed 16 to nothing. Behind Bill Kenny, they stormed back. second half touchdowns left the Chiefs in position to win a game that had seemed hopelessly lost. Bill Kenny will come out with the offense at the 31 yard line with 57 seconds remaining in his ball game. Two timeouts remaining. There is plenty of time to get down in field goal range. 
Kenny backpedals. He looks to throw to the far side. He does. Caught by Carson. He stops the clock with 32 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Bill Kenny gets the snap. He sets in the pocket. Great protection. Sidearm throw. Far side. Caught by Marshall. And he steps out of bounds. He steps out of bounds. Stops the clock at the 26-yard line. A good snap. Back to pass Kenny. Throws to the near side. Caught by Marshall. 23. Stops the clock with 11 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. And Nick Lowry trucks out onto the field. This will be a 37-yard field goal attempt. The second most accurate field goal kicker in history. Ball put down. The soccer style kick is up and good. It's good from 37 yards away. These road warriors had displayed the character and grit of which playoff teams are made. In their flight to prominence, the Chiefs would need to reach deep within themselves again. The Chiefs exited Arrowhead after 13 weeks with a 7-6 record and three straight losses. They stared hard at the crossroad. Few expected this team to alter its course, but there was still time to change the journey. Confidently, a new day would dawn for a team that stood strong and together. The first obstacle on the playoff path was the AFC's best, the Denver Broncos. The defense left the Broncos splattered all over the road. Elway running on the near side, throwing on the run, intercepted by Radisek. 40, 35, breaks the tackle, 30, hops over a defender, 25, and down to the 21. John Elway has just been picked off for the fourth time today. The second half was as dominating a display of football as any NFL team showed all season. The Chiefs outscored the Super Bowl-bound Broncos 27 to nothing. The final blow in this whirlwind performance, a 74-yard interception return for a touchdown by Pro Bowl safety Lloyd Burris. The following week, the Chiefs looked to the west on their stairway to playoff heaven. The setting was the L.A. Coliseum, where the Chiefs had never won, and the opponent was the rival Raiders. Bill Kenny under center, drops back to throw, sets up, cuts his right arm, goes long in the end zone, touchdown, Stephon Page in the corner of the end zone! The Chiefs could not survive a loss, and their quick start in front of a hostile crowd was proof of their resolve. There was little doubt that this team was ready. In the second half, the Raiders would have the ball five times. Four times, the Chiefs took it away. Yet again, this defense seized a crucial victory. Hawkins, straight back to throw, great time. Throws a spiral, there's time intercepted, it's picked off. Kevin Ross, 30, runs to the middle of the field, 25, cuts 20, 15, 10, he's down to the nine. Two down, one to go. A victory and the Chiefs would be playoff bound. The final destination was Pittsburgh, where visiting teams find it very difficult to win. But these young Chiefs had matured. They would lift the burden of frustration off this proud franchise. One, two, three, ten. Yeah. Right, Things that we've been working on from day one in training camp. Every damn day. Ready? Ready. On this day, the special teams of Frank Gantz composed a performance unmatched in NFL history. Gary Newsom, five yards deep in his own end zone. The punt is blocked. It's blocked. The Chiefs recover in the end zone. Touchdown, Kansas City. Duran Cherry left on the loose balls and punched in the end zone. The punt was blocked by Albert Lewis. Here's the soccer style kickoff, low line drive, end over end, taken on a bounce at the three by Boyce Green, up the middle of the 10. Breaks the tackle, 20, 25, 30, up the middle, 40, he's gone! A return of 98 yards on the kickoff by Boyce Green! How about the 
specialty. They block a punt and touchdown, a kickoff return, 98 yards. A 20-yard field goal attempt by Gary Anderson. Ball put down, blocked by the Chiefs. Picked up at the He's 15. Burris is gone. He's gone. In the second half, Pittsburgh mounted a comeback. With only minutes left, team MVP Albert Lewis put the final touch on this season to remember. Let's go now, come on now, D! Second 10, blitz comes on, Cofield has got Malone, he throws, it's intercepted, picked off by Albert Lewis. The Chiefs are in the playoffs. The Chiefs are in the playoffs. 15 years of frustration, 15 years of the hunting success that was so much a part of this Kansas City franchise in their past. No time, but we got it! Today, that 15-year absence will be filled. The frustration gone. Yes, Kansas City, there is a Santa Claus. The Chiefs are ready to challenge. The Chiefs are ready to challenge. We accepted a challenge. And with him, he brings a playoff position for the 1986 Kansas City Chiefs. I think our football team has come a long way, and I think we're ready to establish ourselves as one of the better teams in the National Football League. This team can do it. I've got a, a large amount of faith in the individuals in this team. I believe in them. I don't think they have limits. There isn't a question, not a doubt in my mind, that they can do whatever they set their minds to do. This is a playoff team, a spirited group of men who fought through the hard times to share in the good ones. In 1987, greater heights awaits the Kansas City Chiefs on their flight to prominence.